Here is Siksha Mantra, your own learning platform. Yes, dear friends, just wait and read this sentence another time. Here is Siksha Mantra, your own learning platform. Have you found that Siksha Mantra is written in bold? And also, your own learning platform is something that gets attached with Shiksha Mantra and this is a very essential use of information in our English language and that's also our topic today. So here we are going to learn appositives, what they are and how to use them. So let's begin. The word appositive comes from the Latin for to put near. An appositive is a noun or a noun phrase that sits next to another noun to rename it or to describe it in another way. That is, it provides information that further identifies or defines it. So the points that we get from here that it's a noun or a noun phrase and it's attached to another noun. The purpose is to rename it or to describe it in another way. So let's see what's waiting for us in our next slides. Appositives are usually opposite with commas, parentheses, that is round brackets or dashes. Such bonus facts are framed by commas unless the appositive is restrictive, that is, provides essential information about the noun. Yes, I am repeating the key points. Bonus facts. So, appositives are bonus facts and they provide us essential information about the noun. And here we must find out some easy examples of appositives and you may find it very much related to the first sentence with which we started our discussion. In the examples below, the appositive is shaded and the noun being renamed or described in another way is in bold. Appositives are usually offset with commas. So this is the key point that we must remember. Though later on, we may make a change. So you'd have to stay glued to the end of this presentation because at the end, you'd find out everything in a very clear and well explained way. Next up, my dog will bark if you are not expected by him to be here. Parambir, my army mate, was the hero of the Kargil war. The beast, a large lion with a man like a bonfire, was the main attraction of our circus show. So as we have said, these shaded expressions, nouns or noun phrases, these are the appositives and they are attached to these bold nouns. So my dog is attached to desktop and my dog is an appositive for desktop. That's the noun. And the same thing happens for the other examples as well. So here, appositives can also be offset with parentheses, round brackets or dashes. Now we must learn what is parentheses, a word or phrase inserted as an explanation or afterthought into a passage which is grammatically complete without it. In writing usually marked off by brackets, dashes or commas, a pair of round brackets used to mark off a parenthetical word or phrases. So these are the two key factors. You may pause the video here and read them once again to make your sense clear and then shift to the examples. Poritosh, my met from school, is the winner of the Shahito Academy Award this year. 
So here we are calling my met from stool parenthesis. You can find it that they are in round brackets. Next sentence for the last decade prices in Alton, a small town only 25 minutes from London, have been soaring. So here we have separated the appositive with dashes. So these are the two different ways that you may follow to present parenthesis. But why appositive and parenthesis these two things are spoken of here? Obviously, there are some relations. So when we shift to the next slide, you would get a view of this restrictive and non-restrictive appositives. So here our discussion would be on restrictive and non-restrictive appositives. Yes, that is the point to which I have indicated in our previous slide. So often an appositive will just provide bonus information that could be removed without destroying the meaning. Sometimes, however, removing an appositive will leave you with a question. Dexter will work if you are not expected by him to be here. So if you find the sentence here, we have produced the same sentence in our previous slide where we have added an information here. Dexter, my dog will bark. Now my dog is uh, actually dropped out from this sentence. And as we have uh, told in the previous slide, that uh, dropping this information won't uh, do much harm to your sentence. The sentence would remain grammatically correct. And if you find this Dexter will bark if you are not expected by him to be here, this is grammatically correct. But a question arises, I have said now, it will leave you with a question. Dexter, who? The same thing happens in the next sentence. Parambir was the hero of the Kargil war. Here also we have dropped the positive, that is the bonus information. And here a question arises, which parambir? So restrictive and non-restrictive. These two appositives come from this particular dropping of the bonus information or the extra information or the uh, description, whatever you may call it. So, this is the base on which you would learn restrictive and non-restrictive appositives. So, what are they? We must learn it first. When an appositive is essential for understanding, it is called a restrictive appositive. When it's just a removable bonus information, it's called a non-restrictive appositive. So, non-restrictive appositives are always offset with commas dashes or brackets. We have already learned this. Restrictive appositives are usually offset with commas, dashes or parentheses, round brackets, but not always. So you'd have to focus on this term, but not always. So we have some other uh, parameters to use for appositives because commas, dashes, parentheses, round brackets, etc., we have uh, used them for restrictive appositives, but we have said, but not always. Why we have said this, we'll discuss about this later on in our next slides. So stay glued to this. But remember one thing that when we talk of restrictive appositives, they are what essential for understanding. But when we speak of non-restrictive appositives, they are just removable bonus information. So you can remove the bonus information that is the positive for non-restrictive. But for restrictive, you can't drop them. Otherwise, the meaning would be affected. So this is what our basic difference in between the restrictive appositive and non-restrictive appositive. So let's see what's more waiting for us there. When an appositive appears at the end of a sentence, it can be introduced with a colon. So there we are using another punctuation that is a colon. Learning demands just one thing, consistency. 
learning demands just one thing what thing consistency so it appears at the end of the sentence and we have uh, presented it with colon a comma or a dash would also be fine so it doesn't matter whether you are using a colon or a com comma or a dash you can do anything when it appears at the end of a sentence so here we have another set of rules that would come very much effective for us my dog dexter will bark if you are not expected by him to be here my army met parambir was the hero of the kargil war now if you check it out here you would find that i haven't used any punctuation here for these sentences they are also appositives there uh, i have put some extra information or bonus information but without a comma yes that was uh, what we were discussing in our previous slide about restrictive appositives when a restrictive appositive is not offset with punctuation as in the two examples above that is these two examples and the first example below that is this example the structure will be generic term specific term as opposed to specific term generic term so we can do this but how what is a specific term and generic term we we'll learn them in our next examples my sister down might actually be an angel here my sister this is generic and specific term is down so my sister it's a general thing so it's a generic term and a specific name is down so it's specific term so that's how we may create these appositives that is restrictive appositives then don my sister might actually be an angel but what we have done here we have put the specific term first and then the generic term that's why we have separated them with commas so this is the key of dropping the punctuation when you are using generic term and specific term then you can drop the comma but when you are using specific term and after that comes the generic term obviously you'd have to put that punctuation either commas or brackets or uh, dashes whatever it may be but for restrictive appositives you can follow these uh, rules but uh, what uh, use of these uh, dropping of commas or using commas specific term generic term what use are of they and we'd we'll learn about them in our next slides so stay glued to this presentation and i can assure you that at the end of this presentation you would get something fine you would get something extra ordinary so commas and appositives what relationship do this here commas and appositives whenever we were discussing about appositives we are discussing about commas or punctuations but what's the relationship they share appositive nouns and noun phrases are often non restrictive that is they can be omitted from a sentence without obscuring the identity of the nouns they describe another word for non restrictive is non essential always book in the non restrictive appositive noun or phrase with commas in the middle of a sentence if the noun or phrase is placed at the end of a sentence it should be preceded by a comma so this is the rules of using commas in appositives use commas to frame non restrictive elements so so far we were discussing about restrictive elements and now it's time for non restrictive elements my friend often likens himself to shakti man the indian superhero now if you find this you'd get that uh, this one is uh, not separated with commas why just follow the next sentence my friend often likens himself to shakti man the indian hero it comes at the end so we can't write it down like this we have to put the comma and separate the non restrictive elements depending on the tone you want to achieve and the context you may also choose either parentheses or brackets to frame a non restrictive appositive phrase so this is the rules of using commas to frame non restrictive elements and now 
My friend often likens himself to Shakti Man, the Indian superhero. Here we have used brackets. My friend often likens himself to Shakti Man, the Indian superhero. Here we have used dash. So both the term is possible, both the punctuation is possible. Whichever way you choose to punctuate it, the key is to realize that my friend likens himself to Shakti Man is the core sentence and that Indian superhero is non-essential to that sentence. It is nice to know, but it is not essential in terms of function. So this is what we are calling non-essential. This is why we are calling this information Indian superhero. It's not essential for this sentence. You may drop this. That's why we are calling this non-restrictive appositive. Then comes another very important thing. Think of a sentence with a non-restrictive appositive in it as a bicycle with a basket attached to it. So here we are considering this with a very beautiful picture of a bicycle with a basket. The basket is a lovely addition to the bicycle and changes the overall experience of carrying flowers, decorating your riding experiences. But the bicycle could go on without it. So it doesn't matter whether you have a bicycle uh, with a basket attached to it with flowers or without a basket and without flowers. There's uh, nothing specific about them. They would run just similarly. You would ride them just as you want. But with this, it would be a better experience. So this is what the basic difference between non-restrictive and restrictive. And if you consider this, this basket is actually the non-restrictive appositive and the attachment with which it is attached to the bicycle is punctuation. And what we have said that this bicycle is actually our sentence. And here you have to remember one thing that's a caution. Don't mix commas and restrictive elements. This is a caution. Most of the time students make a wrong use of this. They mix commas with restrictive elements, but you just don't need to do this. When an appositive noun or noun phrase contains an essential element without which the meaning of a sentence would be materially alter, do not frame it with commas. My friend Manjit owes me 50 rupees. So here we have framed this with comma. And in the next example, my friend Manjit owes me 50 rupees. Now, if we uh, explain this, there are no commas here because Manjit is an essential description of my friend. Without this name, we can't detect which friend I am talking of. Why? We can assume from this sentence that the speaker has many friends. That's why he had to make it essential, Manjit. That special friends we are talking about. But the one who owes him or her money is Manjit. So this is the key factor. I have to make this restrictive elements. Otherwise, it would get very difficult to find out which friend I am talking of. My friend Manjit. Here I have used commas and this is also restrictive. Don't think that if you don't uh, put commas with this appositive, it would become restrictive and with commas it would become non-restrictive. That's not the fact, dear friends. You'd have to fill it because a language is all about fillings. Here, my friend Manjit owes me 50 rupees and my friend Manjit owes me 50 rupees with commas, without commas. What's the difference? The unlikely circumstances under which the first sentence could be construed as a correct would be if the speaker has only one confirmed friend and that friend's name is Manjit. This is probably too much to consider nowadays. Does anyone of you have one confirmed friend? 
So consider it only as restrictive. Now think of a bicycle again, except now without the basket. This is the restrictive appositive bicycle. If one wants to hitch a ride on this bicycle, he or she will have to ride with the flowers in his or her hand. With this type of a positive, there is no disconnection between the writer and the bunch of flowers. So, here you'd find the restrictive appositive bicycles twinkles out of shite without commas. So, there are two good reasons to care about appositives. Reason 1. Appositives are an efficient way to add information. And reason 2. An appositive can be a way of creating emphasis. I've told you now, there's something very typical waiting for you. And here it is. Emphasis. An appositive can be used to create emphasis. When used for this purpose, an appositive is often a near repeat of the initial noun. Another great way to create emphasis with an a positive is to put it at the end of the sentence after a colon. To do this, you'll need to deliberately structure your sentence to set the stage for the positive like a punchline. Learning demands just one thing, consistency. So it is used just like a punchline. That's a very much emphasized. If you uh, read this sentence once more, Learning demands just one thing, consistency. When an appositive is presented in this form, it's called an emphatic appositive. I'm repeating the term emphatic appositive. Here you are getting a fresh term for appositive. Emphatic appositive. And now we would learn the key points that we have learned so far. Use an appositive that is a renaming or new description of your noun to shoehorn interesting information or detail into your sentence without destroying your sentence structure. Use an appositive to generate a near repeat, a close copy of your idea to give it emphasis. There's one great literary device for generating emphasis that is an emphatic appositives. That's all folks. We have completed our discussion of appositives and do like and share and subscribe Shiksha Mantra with the bell icon pressed and we'd meet again with some fresh video. Until then, bye bye.